chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, into His marvelous love. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth praises of me, who has called you. They changed the words on this. It's a great song. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. You can be seated. The next two songs we sing today really focus on God and who he is and the fact that we're singing to God because he is our audience, as Brian has said. Uh, just not to do a quick choir practice or anything, but a lot of these songs are high, newer songs are high, but you don't have to sing them that way. You can sing them low. Most of them are designed so you can sing high or low. So I sing low. David Winter sings high. That just, that's just how life works. But uh, just, just enjoy the song. Just put it wherever it feels good for you to sing and just focus on the words. You give life. You are love. You bring life. Praise 
and all the earth will shout your praise. churches basically now worship has been laid open uh, we don't have all the frills it's just very simply done now just singing to the Lord when the music fades all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's a word will bless you Deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my 
This is a song our youth do. It's a great, uh, great testimony song about where our hope is built. Uh, the, the, the gist of the song, the starting verses are, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand, but it's got a great chorus to it, and uh, it's a, just a great worship song. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest flaring, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord. darkness seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil my anchor holds within the veil Christ alone stone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. He is Lord. Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone less to stand before the throne faultless to stand before the throne can y'all sing Christ alone with me Christ alone cornerstone cornerstone weak made strong weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm he is Lord Lord of that's good. Sing it out again. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. I hadn't planned this, but today is a special day in the life of the church and someone asked me about a song and uh, it fits perfectly absolutely perfectly with the song with what the message theme is today you don't have hymn books but you know it why don't you do a verse in the chorus there's a sweet sweet spirit in this place Sweet expressions 
on each face. And I know that it's the presence of the Father, we pray that today we will know that we've been revived when we leave this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brother Mark. If you have your Bibles, open them to Luke chapter number 24. Luke 24. How many of you know what he was alluding to? What is today? Say it, a little, say it again, you know it. Pentecost. Pentecost. Pentecost is today. We're going to do something a little differently for the next few weeks. Um, we didn't get um, to observe Resurrection Sunday, so next Sunday we're going to have a celebration of resurrection. Is that good? And then uh, on June the 14th, uh, we didn't get Mother's Day this year, so we're going to celebrate mothers on the 14th. And then on the 21st is the normal Father's Day. So we didn't want anybody to be, feel left out. So we're going we're gonna to do Resurrection Sunday next week, and then we'll celebrate all of our moms on the 14th, and then we'll uh, have Father's Day on the 21st, and on the 28th, I don't know what we'll have. We'll have church. Amen? But today is Pentecost. Uh, how many of you thought about that today already before you came to church? Some? Some? That's a blessing. Pentecost was the second of uh, the Jewish festivals that they had in their calendar. It, is, it means 50, 50 days. It came seven weeks after uh, Passover. Uh, Passover actually was on the Sabbath, which was Saturday. So it would be seven weeks plus one day, 50 days after Passover. And it was the celebration of the ending of the spring harvest. So you were very grateful for all the things that God had done for you. So you would come and, and you would celebrate by, by giving God uh, great praise and glory for all the bounty that he had done for you. He is the so sovereign God. He's Jehovah Jireh. He is the God who provides. We do not take that for granted, right? Everything that we have, we know, comes from and flows from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, through the power of his Holy Spirit. Praise God for that. Now, in the church, to the Jewish people, it was the, the celebration of the ending of the spring harvest. To us, we celebrate because of what happened on that day. It's not Pentecost, but what happened on the day of Pentecost, which was the, the releasing of the Holy Spirit and the beginning of what you and I know today as the church age, where souls were saved. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost People gave their heart and life to Christ. They received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Christ came to live within them in the power of the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful concept. It's too much for all of us really to be able to comprehend is that the God of the universe will come close and live within us. What a blessing that is. So let's begin this looking in uh, Luke chapter number 24. We're going to look in Luke 24. And then we're going to flip over and we're going to look into um, Acts chapter number 1. Are you fearing Luke 24? Say amen. amen. If you're not, say wait. I got one almost back there, I don't know. Let's look in verse number 44. Then he said to them, this is Christ, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things... Say it with me, must be fulfilled. All things must be fulfilled, 
which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament that were fulfilled in Christ and Jesus Christ. His birth, his life, his ministry, the death on the cross of Calvary, how he would die, that he would be buried, and that he would, he would rise from the dead, and that he would be resurrected, and even that he would ascend back to glory. And even there were prophecies in the Old Testament, not only that he would come, but that he would come a second time as the millennial king, and that he would put his feet back upon this planet Earth and would reign in power and in righteousness. The lion would lay with the lamb. All of those prophecies fulfilled. And he said, I told you these things. The law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, all of them were speaking about me. These things must be fulfilled. Then in verse 45, and he opened their understanding that they may comprehend the scripture. The message today is really going to be about the Holy Spirit. And this is one of the things that the Holy Spirit does for us. Y'all listening? If this book, if you wanted to understand and, and know all of it, it's really a complicated book. It's really very hard to understand all of those things. But yet, we know the author. And the author introduces his word to us. So one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is he speaks. And he speaks to us personally. And he speaks the word of God. And he speaks the word of God to you in your life, in your circumstances, in your heart. And if you have ears to hear, and if you have a heart that's hungry, then God will not only speak to you the wisdom of the Word of God, but He will make it plain. So you can take the, the things of the infathomable and make it understandable and clear, clear enough to know it, claim it, Stand on it and walk it through. Now, I don't know about a religion that I can't understand. I don't know about a word that I don't know how to walk it out. But if the Lord will come and amplify and make it come alive in our lives, then we have hope to go out in this world and do what he's called us to do with the power of the Holy Spirit with us. So in verse number 45, he said, he opened their understanding. Verse 46, then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in the name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, listen to me now, I send the promise. I send the promise of my Father unto you. God made a promise, and God's not a liar. God's a, a, a promise keeper. And he said, I made a promise that I was going to come. I was going to send the Messiah. He was going to make the way. And Christ has done that. But understand, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to be with you. And though you may not understand it, and though the disciples probably would have wanted it differently. They had walked with Jesus for three, three and a half years. They had stayed with him pretty much all the time. They had heard his preachings. They had seen that face of love. They could have come and asked him questions when that unknown was there. And by the way, we're going to face the unknowns when we go through life's events. And the greatest fear we have is of the unknown. And if we have to go through life and face all these unknowns, it'd be nice to have someone who could help us out. It'd be nice to have someone who knew the answers to be there with us. It'd be nice to have someone there to, to comfort. It'd be nice to have someone there to, to amen with a yes or to say, oh no, with a no. It'd be nice to have someone there who could show us the ways of God where we could confidently walk and do his will. He said, you are witnesses. I will send the promise of my Father, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. We'll talk more about that word endued 
with power in just a moment. But look what it says in verse 50. And he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them that he parted from heaven and was carried up into heaven. Or excuse me, he parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they continually uh, and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. He towed them. He took them out. He put out his hands and he blessed them. He reminded them of his purpose and his mission. He reminded them of their mission, their commission to fulfill. He put blessings upon them. Man, that must have been great. Could you imagine the feeling that they were there and they were in tune with Christ? Maybe a tear was flowing down from their face because they really didn't understand and they really didn't want him to leave. But from the hands of blessing, and then he lifted those hands up, and the law of gravity was suspended, and the Lord and Savior was raised up 5 feet, 10 feet, 20 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet, moving back up. You know, I, I said in the first service, when, when my kids were small and, and they wanted me to come pick them up, they'd come up to me and they'd raise their hands and say, Daddy, Daddy, and I would reach down my arms and I would pick them up so that they could be with me. And I know my Lord, who put off the robes of glory to walk down and, and be the suffering servant on this earth. But when the mission was fulfilled and it was time to go home, he went to that place and blessed his servants that he was going to leave the mission with. And he raised his hands to the Father. And the Father picked him up and carried him home. What a day that must have been in glory. When our Lord made it home, walked down the streets of glory. And can't you, can't you just imagine the angels that were there? Jesus, it's good to have you home. Jesus, it hadn't been heaven without you. Thank you for what you did. Sorry for your scars, but it's good to have you home. <coughs> and Jesus went back to that throne. The throne that only he could fulfill. Others may have wanted to ascend to that throne, but they didn't have it. They'll never have it because there's only one upon the throne, and that's the, the God, of our Father, and our, our Savior, his Son, and the Spirit. And the Bible says that he sat down at the right hand of the Father. When he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. When he went to the throne room that day and he sat down, by the way, the same one, <clears throat> that the old Holy of Holies represented that had the veil that when he was on the cross was torn from the top to the bottom. God tore that veil. No more any barriers to us. Now he's sitting down on the Holy Holies of Heaven. Listen, no barriers. No barriers from us. We can come boldly to the throne of grace in glory. We can enter that place of being with Christ. And he sat down because his work was finished. But his work is only finished as the Holy Spirit takes up that work and carries it on. Now Jesus is doing what he needs to. He listens to my prayers. He listens to your prayers. Praise God for the day that that 10-year-old boy came walking down the aisle, kneeled, kneeled down on his knees, thought the world was going to explode within him, knew that I had sinned, knew that I had done wrong, and I cried out to God, and I repented of my sins, and I asked God to do something for me. Praise God, Jesus was right there where he needed to be to hear that prayer, to accept me as his son, to dip the pen into the blood of Christ, to write my name in the Lamb's book of life where it can never be removed, and I am his, and he is mine forevermore. Praise God. But yet the work must continue. He says, wait. For the promise don't leave wait for the promise and they did I like what it says there at the end of Luke's gospel look what it says they worshiped him returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God amen could you imagine those guys they had just seen Jesus ascending back to glory they did a hop skip and a jump and they went back down to Jerusalem and they're down and they, they they bust into the temple praising God worshiping God and they're like what in the world's going on 
You see, yeah, what in the world was going on? Jesus was going on in the world. Jesus was expressing himself from one heart at a time. And I, I bet everybody said, those are the strangest people in the world. I like it when Paul said, we are a peculiar people. How many of y'all know you're peculiar? I am too. But I, I, I resemble my father. Listen, and when we worship, we resemble the Holy Spirit. We can actually be like and actually join in the praises of glory that are happening even now. Though I am here on mission for Christ here, I can be there and by the Spirit of God praising Him as well. One day, two days, five days, ten days pass. They weren't expecting it. They didn't know how long it would be when everybody from all over the world had gathered together for Jerusalem. Now we understand there's about 120, and they're in the upper room where Jesus was with them when he, when he had the Lord's Supper there. They're there, and they're, they're worshiping and praying, and a sound happened. A sound happened. A sound so loud, a sound so strong that everyone in there in, in Jerusalem heard it and, and began to rush to the place that they heard the sound. Acts chapter 2, verse 5. They rushed to it. Now, people have often asked me, said, I wonder why it was a sound. I think I've come to believe that anytime that there is a representation of God, people want to build an idol to it. I mean, they want to picture it and they want to build something to it so they can have something in their house that, that reminds them of God and they can bow to it or a picture. We got pictures of what Jesus looked like. That may be what the artist thought he looked like, but I doubt any of them are in any way close, right? What is God? We want to build an idol to say what God is. Isn't it wonderful that he sent a sound because we can't describe a sound of wind? A rushing, mighty wind. What does that look like? I don't know. I can hear it as it blows through. I can feel it. But what does it look like? All I can tell you, I can tell you the effects left of it. I was trying to think about what year it was. It was probably sometime about 1993 or 1994, my parents were living in East Denali. Some of you may know where that's at. That's in Stevens County. My mom's home place was there, and they had retired and moved back to Stevens County and had a, had a home there. And we went to visit. And I know, I remember all three of the kids were small because we were, um, we were sleeping in the bedroom and we had a pallet in the floor. How many of y'all know about a pallet in the floor? Putting your kids down there on the pallet floor. And sometime about 2.30 or about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, somewhere in that area, the, the, the windows were open and we heard this noise. And we sat up in bed. It just woke us up. It was unmistakable. And the curtains went straight out. I mean straight out. And it, it lasted a few seconds. And then all of a sudden the curtains came down, the noise was gone, and we're like, what in the world was that? And Lynn was checking on the kids. You know, she wasn't really worried about me at that point. She was checking on the kids, make sure they were all right. And then we looked up at ourselves and said, what in the world was that? And then we, we're, we went back to sleep. And the next day we explored. And we, Dad's house, Mom's house, was kind of up on a, a little bit of a knoll. And I went down and looked down went down the hill and came back up to the other one and the trees were all down what had happened is a a tornado had come through and then it just kind of did a little hop skip and a jump and came right up over the top of us and then landed back down and kept going see because god had called me to something and led to something and i pray god had had a calling on my children that hadn't yet been fulfilled and if God calls you to something, God's going to let you give you an opportunity to fulfill it because his plans aren't going to go astray. Y'all hear me? So I went back there and looked, and there was an oak tree in the front. Daniel, it was, 
not quite as wide as the, it was probably six foot no matter how you looked at it it was huge and it had limbs in that tree that were like this big around way up in it and those tree those limbs up in that tree just twisted snapped and twisted and fell and by the way when some of them fell they missed my car God only not only missed me it missed my car too I've seen the effects of it I have heard before what that sounded like now you, you're pastor so it was a tornado no I didn't say that don't you quote me on that and I got a video that says I didn't say it it was a noise the Bible says in Acts 2 the sound why sound because everybody else came running and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit was upon them you know <coughs> it's amazing to me how people want to clarify the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and I've met people and they're gonna say yeah well when the Spirit comes this is what the Spirit's gonna do or this is what the Spirit's gonna do let me kind of give y'all a word um, let me look in John look at the end of John chapter 20 and chapter 21 in John 20 at the very end of it John says this in his gospel verse number 30 truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book many signs we don't know what all of them were verse 31 but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing you may have life in his name now look at the end of chapter 21 verse number 25 scripture says this and there are many there are also many other things that Jesus did which if they were written one by one I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written amen what's John saying so many things that Jesus did every day Jesus did amazing things every day he was blessing people every day there were amazing miracles that occurred every day if you want to write everyone down there is no ability this world could not contain the books to describe all the the aspects of all the elements of all the miracles of all the manifestation that happened in Jesus's life but folks let me just tell you something else if we wanted to talk about the Holy Spirit and we wanted to talk to you about all the things and the manifestations of the Holy Spirit there aren't enough books that this world could comprehend and you're always listen to me now look up here you're always going to find someone and they're going to tell you the Holy Spirit because of this or the Holy Spirit because of that and if you don't have this or you don't have that then you don't have the Holy Spirit listen to me God is so much bigger than us I understand in Mark chapter 16 Jesus himself said said there will be many manifestations of the Holy Spirit but I can tell you one manifestation of the Holy Spirit today Christ in me through the gifts that he gave me preaching the Word of God witnessing of the, the, the words of God we're gonna see it in just a moment we're gonna give an invitation and the Holy Spirit will take those words and make them come alive in people's hearts and Christ will call people to himself and people will, will repent of who they are and what they're doing and they'll seek to believe in Christ and come to Christ and trust Christ to do what God's called them to do for salvation and for works of love folks that's a miracle I don't care how you look at it how many let me just ask how many of y'all have been through circumstances where you came close to death look around matter of fact I've done it, I've done it many times in my life I got cut by an industrial fan one of those 48 inch fans that came around hit my nose actually split it wide open I mean that close the doctor said if I just tilted a little bit more into it my head would have exploded like a melon I literally came within an inch of just not even being here I was 16 years old you think God had a plan for my life when I was 14 years old I was sitting at a traffic light with my mom driving the car 
a tractor trailer was coming dead at us. He was trying to stop. It was rainy. It was sliding. It was coming right at us. And in the last, I mean, I can't tell you what type of a second or a millisecond it was. It turned at the end and caught traction and just took the front of our car and spinned us like a top. And then it went through a sign and went into a pharmacy. If it had not turned at the last second. How many times have we been through things when, when we got this close but God was there? How many times have we been so close and then the presence of God was there to give us the right word, the right answer? A place. And you see, I could never convince you of that. But you've experienced it. And you know what it is. Understand, God the Father is right where he need to, needs to be. He sent his son to do the job that he needed to fulfill, and he's fulfilled it. But the Holy Spirit is there as well, fulfilling the work of God even in us. God's gift. If Jesus were here in the flesh, he could be in one place. But the Holy Spirit could be in all of our hearts. For anyone who's out there crying, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever shall call upon the name of God, he hears them, he knows them. He knows everything about them. So let me tell you three quick things that you probably know. But let me just, since this is the day that we talk about when God sent the Holy Spirit, let me tell you three things about the Holy Spirit you're going to need to want, you need to know. Number one, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. He's not the red-headed stepchild. He's fully God. There are people who give the Father much praise. Amen? And we're supposed to pray to the, to the Father through the name of Jesus Christ. But we do that through the enablement of the Holy Spirit. Praise God for the Son. And there are a lot of people who emphasize the Son, Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, in today's day, I think more people in the Protestant church the evangelical church, I think more people put more props towards Jesus than they do the Father or the Spirit. He deserves no more. He deserves no less. But listen to that. If the Father deserves full credit as being God, and Jesus Christ deserves full credit as being God, we better give full credit to the Holy Spirit. I understand the Trinity, and I have no clue. I understand it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and I believe that they're one, what God's Word teaches. I mean one. They're not three. They're one. But they're still in three facets of it. Now, you say, Pastor, I don't understand that. Well, amen. I just gave you my best shot at it, and I didn't do very good at it either. Amen? But I know it to be true. We need the Spirit as much as we need the Father and as much as we need Jesus Christ. He must not be overlooked. Please, let's not forget Him. He is the promise of the Father to us. He promised it and He fulfilled it. He is God. He is God. Number two, he's everywhere. I'm very bad about this. I, I say it too much. And I, matter of fact, I said it in the first service, and I've said it between the first and the second service, and I'm going to say it to you again. Come, Holy Spirit. You ever said that? Come, Holy Spirit. I'm asking him to do what he's already done. He's already here. Listen to this. He's close. He's close. How many of you thought of God being way out there in the galaxies? There's billions and trillions, not just of planets, of galaxies. And in each one of those galaxies, there's trillions of stars in each and every one of them. And we talk, I mean, the scientists tell us about what a light year is and how many light years it takes us to get to the, to the sun and to the edge of the Milky Way and to the next edge of the next galaxy and all that kind of stuff. Folks, that's great big, and God holds the, the universe in the hands. He is the God of all of that. He is the God who has no boundaries, who has no limits in space or time. 
but he's also close. I mean, right here, close. One of the things that I absolutely love, and I give you, I, I thank you as a church. When you call me to be your pastor, you gave me an opportunity to spend as much time with the Lord as I want to spend. You freed up my schedule, literally, to where I can spend time in prayer and study, and I do that. Matter of fact, this morning, I was outside about 5.30 in the morning. I, I got up a couple hours before that. But a couple times this week, I, I got up, and I, I, I like this time of year. Matter of fact, this morning, I was out about 5.30, and it was dark, but it really wasn't dark. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And, the, and, and I, I got a chance to be up this morning before the birds began to sing. Matter of fact, when I was going back for my second cup of coffee, the birds began to sing. And I went and took my Bible and I went outside. And I just praised God. And, of course, my neighbor across the street, well, behind my neighbor across the street, has chickens, yard chickens. And they were having a hallelujah sermon this morning. I mean, they were just praising God to the extent of they, they were created. And they were giving him glory. And I thought, this week, one day, it was Tuesday, I think. I, was, I know I was up early outside Tuesday and Thursday both, but I, I got thinking, Lord, I, I have my chair. And I thought, Lord, you're just right here. And I thought about that scripture, that he knows the, the birds and not one falls to the earth that he doesn't know about. But I got thinking about, he knows every feather on every bird because he's right there with them and he knows every ant and my I don't I've got them at my house I don't know about your house but I got them everywhere and they he knows the ones that are above ground and he knows the ones that are below ground he matter of fact he tells us if we'll study and we'll learn something from them he knows everything about them and he knows every little blade of grass and he knows every leaf on every tree and I don't know about you but it's rained for about two weeks and he's been feeding the ground with water and it's been coming up the ground through the trees and, and my grass is growing and the leaves are beautiful I mean they're just wonderful and my peach trees are bending over with all the peaches that are on them and I'm just praising God and I'm thinking Lord you're right here you're not out there you're right here and, and, and I was awake in science class enough to know that two hydrogen and one oxygen makes water and I look at the water and I think about how he beautifully puts that together and the streams that flow into it and and how what that it never stops the spigot never stops and how God knows every bit of that and he provides for every fish that are there it doesn't matter if you're on a, the outskirts of whatever uh, planet that's out there he is there and he is here and it doesn't matter if you're the smallest I don't know, about two weeks ago, we didn't have gnats at my house, but they've showed up. Amen? And you take a walk and you have to do this, right? Or, <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about? But he knows every gnat. He knows them individually. That's the power of our God. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is God, and he's close, and he knows you. There's not one thing that you go through that he doesn't know intricately about. He's the all-knowing God. But you see, we want to define everything the way our mind can understand it, but it's so much beyond that. So much beyond that. So as we're walking through circumstances, God is there. But you see, God is not only with us as we're there. He was with us before we got into that circumstance, and he's going to be with us as we move through it. And God is at work in our circumstances. I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. At every level of our life, there are many things that are unknown. And our greatest fear is the unknown. Isn't it great? Aren't you grateful that you know the one who knows every one of those things? A God who is omniscient, who knows all. So I don't know what's going on, but I know the one who does. How many of you said, I don't know what to do, what to do? Well, but when we need to, we ask and we can receive. We can seek and we can find. We can knock and he'll open that door. 
Praise God for open doors. Amen? Praise God for closed doors. Praise God that when I pray, he'll say yes. But praise God, sometimes he'll say no. And praise God that we can live the infinite because he can come through and he can say, I will only give you that which is good and right and best. He's close. One of the names of, the whole, of, of, of God is Jehovah, R-O-I. Kale looked it up for me. <clears throat> Hebrew's always been difficult for me. Kale, Kale says, was it Google? Calls it Roe. Jehovah Roe. It's Hebrew, whatever it is, amen. But it means the God who sees. So when you fall down, he sees it. When you're bewildered, he sees it. Our forefathers, when they were setting up this country, when they gave us our currency, you know what they put on the back of the currency? The all-seeing eye of God. Because no matter what, it won't. they were saying we have a God of sovereignty and providence who watches over us. He sees all. And every time you pull out a dollar to pay your light bill, the God of the lights was part of it. The God who sees. So let me tell you three quick things as I bring this to an end that I think we need to remember and hold close about this Holy Spirit that we represent and we, we praise today. Take your Bible, look in Acts chapter 1. Let's look at them quick. Acts 1, verse 4. And be assembled together with them. He commanded them to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. which he said you have heard from me for John truly baptized you with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now that word means you will be immersed with the Holy Spirit he doesn't want us to come and just dip your toe in the Holy Spirit and I'm not trying to throw off on anybody who there are a lot of people today who baptize with sprinkling but we can't I don't want to get sprinkled with the Holy Spirit I want to be immersed and he wants all of me. I'm going to use this illustration. I like this illustration of a house. It may have an attic. It may have a basement. But he wants every room in the house. If you are the temple of the Lord, he wants every bar- part of your life. He does, you may say, well, I'll, I'll let the Lord have this. Or I'll ha- let the Lord have this. But, but the money's mine. My career's mine. My, what I want to do is mine. My hobbies are mine. My mission is mine. No. It's either his or it's not at all. He wants you to be fully immersed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants all of you. I hope you hear this. I hope you hear it well. If there's any area of your life that is not surrendered to the Holy Spirit in your life, not surrendered to Jesus Christ's will in your life, that's where the Holy Spirit is going to start convicting and working until you give it over to him. Number two. Not only immersed, but empowered. Look what it says in verse 7. And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. They were worried about when the kingdom was coming. But he said, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You shall receive power. Whose power? My power? No, 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 no. His power. In Genesis, when it says, in the beginning, God created, Jesus spoke the words, let there be. The Holy Spirit took those words and empowered those words and made it happen. I mean, all of this creation is the Holy Spirit empowering the word of Christ and making them happen. That same power, same power, Exact power is what is at work in us. So you look at something and you say, that's a mountain, that's too big, I can't move it. He said, no, 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 if you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can tell that mountain to get up and move and it's gone, thrown into the sea. 
You see, you see that as a boundary. You see that as a barrier. Maybe to your power, but not to his. He told them that you're going to go be witnesses unto me to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world. That's, there's no way they can do that. No way. Hold on. His power. His power. We need to be immersed in him. We need to be empowered by him. I don't want to preach in my power. I want to preach in his. I don't want to walk in my power. I'd rather walk in his. And you have just as much power, not of the Holy Spirit, as you allow the Holy Spirit to have in you. For the glory of God, through the work of Christ and the Holy Spirit in us, you shall be witnesses. People come to me and say, oh, I, I can't do that. Well, hold on. If you, can, you may be talented in this world, but we don't need that. We, we don't need your talent. We need God's power. God doesn't call the enabled. He enables the called. And if God called us to be witnesses, church, I suggest we about get, get about his business. We start doing what he's called us to do. And let him empower us. Oh, that's all these things of faith. It's, it's, as soon as God shows it to me, no, you just listen to the Holy Spirit and he'll show you as you go. Immersed, empowered, enabled to be witnesses. How many more things do you want the Holy Spirit to do? Can I just say whatever you need, he's there. I'm going to say it again. Whatever you need, he's there. Hold on, I don't think you caught me. Whatever you need, he's there. You have sins, whatever you need, he's there. He'll take away those sins. You need eternal life, whatever you need, he's there. Do you think he cares about what you're walking through? He sees it. He knows He's the God of love. He has to. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. One of the things, preacher, I've learned, one of the things is I can't, but he can. So I'm not going to try to do it, but I'll let him do whatever he chooses to do. And there's a promise. Wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And everything he promised, he'll do. Everything he promised, he'll do. If we'll let him. If we'll let him. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the day of Pentecost. But Lord, may we always celebrate you working with us. Emmanuel, Christ with us. Lord, you're close. Lord, you're here. Lord, you can come with the sound of a mush, rushing mighty wind. You can also come with a still, small voice. You can give us great wisdom of the intricacies of all the things that we face in life, or you could just give us rest and peace as we wait upon you. Father, Lord, if there's anyone here today that is in need, you are the answer. Call them to yourself. Lord, if there's someone who needs to repent, Lord, bless us with belief and repentance today. If there's someone who needs to ask you to come into their life and save them, then Father, may they be filled with repentance and belief and may you save them today. Father, we thank you that you're the God who can. And Lord, we thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit who will do these things in us. Are we worthy? Lord, I know, I know I'm not worthy. But it's not about if I'm worthy or not. I'm just grateful that you are who you are. So Lord, speak to the people in this building today. By the power of your spirit, convict and encourage. And Lord, everyone who's watching online, Lord, no matter what the time frame is, speak Holy Spirit. Draw people to yourself. Draw them away from their sins. 
Lord, when we say their arms of love are around them, Lord, we know your arms are already there. Draw them close. And Lord, may we move from where we are to where you are. One step from my heart in time passes all eternity. Oh God, thank you for being that type of a God. Lord, meet the needs of your people. And sir, we'll give you all the glory. All the glory. And Lord, we will praise you continuously with all of our strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Stand with us now as we think of the things and make decisions for the Lord today. Make those decisions right now. The Lord is listening. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise 